Marcellin, who reigned over Dalmatia, maintained good relations with Constantinople and succeeded in marrying his nephew Julius Nepos with one of the nieces of the Empress Faureen. He recognized Anthemius Emperor and participated in the war against the Vandals at the head of his army. But at the end of the war he was assassinated, probably in Sicily. At the instigation of Rissima or Genseric, Nepos succeeds his uncle and begins to reign over Dalmatia, after the death of Anthemius. Orestes was indignant at the successive elevation of Olibrius and Glycerius. That is why he welcomes an envoy from Dalmatia who is sending him a proposal from his master. Patrician Julius Nepos does not recognize Glycerius Emperor of the West. King Gundabald insulted the Roman people by placing the imperial diadem on the head of his servant. Nepos decided, with the approval of the Emperor Leo, to compose an army capable of overthrowing Glycerius. He proposes that you join this army at the head of the Huns' detachments as you have already done to support the Emperor Majorian. Orestes reflects aloud, I salute this initiative of Julius Nepos. Son of General Nepotanius, Majorian militia master and my great friend. He must mobilize a sufficiently powerful army because Glycerius is supported by the Bergens and the former army of Rissima. I believe that Constantinople, after the loss of 50,000 soldiers in the war against the Vandals, cannot help Nepos on the military plane. Yes, that's unfortunately true. That's why Nepos, our young Patricius, is counting on your relationship with the Huns and their old allies and your great experience. He promises you in writing to appoint you, after the victory. Patricius and General-in-Chief of the Roman Armies. The envoy gives a letter which Orestes reads attentively. Then he says, Very honored by this proposal, I accept it. In spite of my age, more than 70 years, I feel in very good physical shape. I even intensified my daily exercises to initiate my 12-year-old son Romulus into military art. He is currently hunting in the mountains with the Huns of our private militia. Content, the envoy smiles, I thank you for your agreement to support the struggle for the honor of the Roman people. Nepos thinks that Glycerius and his master Gundabal should not suspect our preparations. In this case, the king of the Bergens, sooner or later, will leave his puppet alone in Rome for the affairs of his kingdom. Then the rapid attack of the cavalry under your command will decide the matter. In that case I shall be obliged to look for the horsemen among the heralds, the skyers, and the rouges, for the Huns are far away. After the death of my friend Edicon, their king, Prince Edoeca entered the service of the Romans. Undoubtedly, he will support us because he does not like Glycerius, puppet of the Bergens. I will also reinforce my private militia by new Hun mercenaries. The hoofs are heard echoing on the pavement of the court. Orestes rejoices. It's Romulus who comes back from the hunt with our guards. He leaves the house accompanied by the envoy of Nepos who admires a detachment of horsemen and asks. But why are they all armored and helmeted? It is indispensable in this border area. The hunt was accompanied by military exercises. The envoy does not hide his admiration. Your son is remarkably beautiful. The Emperor Augustus, who was handsome, must have resembled your son in his youth. One of the horsemen laughs, we also call our young master Augustulus. Little August. In the spring of the year 474, King Gundabald actually left Italy, engaged in the struggle for power with his two brothers. Julius Nepos, immediately proclaimed Augustus by the Emperor Leo. 
then landed in the port of Ostia and proceeded to Rome, already blockaded by the Orestes cavalry. Glycerius obtained permission to exchange the imperial tiara for the bishop of Salone in Dalmatia. On August 24, Julius Nepos was officially proclaimed emperor of the West. He kept his promise and appointed Orestes as Patricius and General-in-Chief of the Roman armies. But this nomination is for Orestes a sign of the weakness of the decaying empire, which, like a man who drowns, clings to a blade of straw. The new emperor is only 24 years old, and spends too much money to maintain his court, and to satisfy the wishes of his wife who wishes to imitate the way of life of her aunt Voronis, Empress of the East. Thus Orestes can not hire enough mercenaries for the defense of the empire. His own villa in Pannonia, after the removal of his family to Rome, was plundered by the barbarians. Abandoned. It is turning into ruins. South Gaul is disputed between the Visigoths and the Burgans. The weak diplomatic and military efforts are not enough to contain the offensive of Euric. Who became the king of the Visigoths after the assassination of his brother Theodoric? In this situation the emperor yields to Euric and recognizes the de facto independence of his kingdom. But Orestes succeeds in wresting Marseille and Arles from the power of the Visigoths. From the top of the capital, Orestes and Julia look at the panorama of the depopulated and ruined capital after the sack three years ago by Rissima's troops. Saddened by this painful sight, Orestes remembers an old proverb, as long as the Colosseum is standing, Rome is also standing, when the Colosseum falls, will fall also Rome, when Rome falls, the world will fall. And then he thinks. The Colosseum is still standing, but Rome has already fallen three times, it has been taken and plundered by the troops of Alaric, Genseric, and Rissima. He sighs and says to his wife, During the last twenty years, the city has lost a large part of its population. In fact, there is only one-tenth of the population left over from the time of my childhood. I am now seventy-five. The future of our son seriously worries me. We ruined ourselves to support Julius Nepos. Rissima killed the Eternal City, more than the Vandals. It seems to me that the Greek entourage of the young Empress intrigues against us. I'm afraid of a new civil war. It's possible. Let us not forget that Basiliscus, who is chiefly responsible for the fall of Anhemius, was appointed commander by the protection of the Empress of the East. There are certainly young courtiers who dream of replacing me. Yet the young friends of the imperial couple do not understand how critical the situation is. This pretty crowd sees no farther than the tip of her nose. You could do much more for the Empire if you had more power and resources. You could do much more for the Empire if you had more power and resources. That is true, but perhaps I won't have that much time. It is in the interest of the Roman peoples that I should act immediately.